Now, I can't say for certain, but I'm pretty sure all of us here, or at least most of us, have at one time or another while surfing the web experienced that magnetic feeling of attraction when we see something that just grabs our attention, an image that's irresistible, practically pulling you in. Well, one night, late, alone, while navigating the internet, that's exactly what happened to me. I found something so hot, I could not drag my eyes away. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop staring and staring. Let me tell you, she was beautiful, mesmerizing, and mysterious too. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get her out of my head. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm here to confess to you. This is what I saw. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. What in God's name is that? So, let me explain. This is a map that has had me fascinated for quite some time now. It's part of an interactive website about air raid shelters, also known as air raid bunkers. Now, I know you're probably even more confused now, and most of you are likely thinking, what kind of weird kid gets a magnetic feeling from a historical map? But don't pull out your phone and start checking Instagram or WhatsApp just yet. It'll get better. Just bear with me. So let me briefly explain what this map actually shows. It compiles all of the documented information about the bomb shelters built in Barcelona during the Spanish Civil War, which ravaged Spain from 1936 to 1939. But what's actually represented here? Firstly, a heat map. You see, I told you it was hot. In red, showing the impact of the bombings each black dot representing one of the 1,322 built shelters, and different filters to play around with, like the time and condition of different shelters. However, what struck me most is that of over the 1,000 shelters that were once built, only three remain. One, two, and three. Just three. 99.7% gone, vanished, out of existence, just as if they were never here at all. Almost all of them have been disregarded, neglected, fallen into disrepair, and doomed to the dustbin of history. But before I dive into the story of this history, the legacy of forgetting, and my fascination with one particular shelter, let me bombard you with some history. <laughs> During the Civil War in Spain, a large number of anti-aircraft shelters were built in the city of Barcelona and used by the civilian population to protect themselves from the aerial bombings of Franco and his fascist allies. Now, what most of you may not know is that during the Spanish Civil War, Barcelona became the first city to be systematically bombed despite being far from the front lines. And it's considered to be the first carpet bombing of a civilian population in history. Now, historians often call the Spanish Civil War a sort of test run for World War II. That's because just a couple years later, this very carpet bombing tactic would become the blueprint for similar attacks on other European cities, such as Berlin, London, and Dresden. But not only was this system of raids copied, but these other cities employed Barcelona's system of defense to protect their own civilians. In Barcelona, during these attacks, 2,500 people perished. And they left a lasting physical and psychological scar on the city and on its civilians. As I navigated the map and viewed the images and posters from the actual air raid shelters, I suddenly felt great empathy for those who had to endure the looming threat of death. I could imagine people racing to the shelters in the dead of night, literally running for their lives. Surely, 
These subterranean structures saved thousands of lives. But, sadly, these historical relics from Barcelona's past are nearly lost and permanently forgotten. Much like the buildings and homes obliterated by the bombs across the cities, these shelters are being erased from our historical memory. Other than this interactive map, there's hardly any information online about them. For me, it's a shame that these tangible pieces of living history have been overlooked and ignored, covered by parking lots and buildings, just like the history and legacy of the Spanish Civil War. That's exactly why I decided to find a way to visit these historical sites myself. And then, I admit it, I got lucky. I stumbled upon, upon a blog post from 2010 that said that there was a bunker I could visit just five minutes from my home. Bunker number 267. And even though it was semi-abandoned, fortunately, it was still possible to visit it. The shelter was on the fourth floor below ground of a parking lot. And to get in, I simply needed to ask the parking attendant for the key. Simple enough, right? As I descended down the numerous staircases, I pondered whether this was true or, you know, just some internet fabrication. But after passing through the cars on the fourth floor, there it was. The metal door I saw online. She looked exactly like she did in her pictures. <laughs> Thrilled at the fact that the internet hadn't failed me this time, I rapidly reascended the staircases to find the parking attendant and ask him for the key just like the blog post said to do. But, as I should have expected, some things have changed since 2010. Namely, City Hall had taken the key away. This was a big shock and a great disappointment. Reviews on the, sh on the website described this shelter as frozen in time, and I desperately wanted to experience what they described as hearing the echoes of the past and wishing that the walls could talk. So, I decided to try and talk to City Hall directly, call them and try find this lost key to bunker number 267. I mean, how hard could this be? Well, anyone who's tried to get a, get a DNAI, tramites, or really anything done by any branch of the Spanish government knows exactly what happens next. Layers and layers and layers and layers of bureaucracy. Many of my phone calls resulted in no one responding, a very curt answer. In one case, an answer from an aggressive old lady telling me how dare I have called her in the first place since, you know, her office didn't deal with this. And generally, they resulted in rambling and unhelpful answers that usually resulted in them telling me to call someone, who, someone who'd I'd already talked to. And these many calls resulted in me being directed to other offices, which included the Barcelona Archive, the administrative offices of my neighborhood, the Cultural Institute of Barcelona, my neighborhood's historical archives, and other municipal and city offices, you know, just to name a few. Apparently, stepping inside of the past wasn't going to be as easy as I thought. After all of my efforts, I was no closer to finding this lost key as I was when I started, and I'd repeatedly been told in no uncertain terms that this was generally no one's responsibility, or at least not theirs. So I decided to return to the source and write an email to the creators of the map that I showed you before, the Archaeology Service of Barcelona. And while I was pleasantly surprised to receive an email back from them, my hopes were dashed when they sadly confirmed that bunker number 267 was closed to the public for the moment. They told me that the city had slowly started to process the paperwork to possibly open it and make it visible in the future, but for now, it was closed. However, there was still hope. Even though I couldn't visit this particular shelter, I was informed that I could go to the one preserved shelter that's open, run by the city, and that has been turned into museum. Finally, I could get my chance to step into the past. This bunker was remarkably well curated and preserved. Firstly, an informative city worker, they do surprisingly exist, gave us a small history lesson about the story of the Civil War and about Barcelona's city-run shelters. 
Next, we were invited to explore it on our own. Everything had remained intact from the 1930s. The low ceilings, musty smell, and shockingly cold and dank atmosphere immediately hit me across the face. Shivering on the benches lining the walls, I began, ref I began reflecting on what life was truly like 85 years ago. It was an out-of-body experience. I had a sense of what a young teenager like me would feel. Awakened in the cold of night, sprinting to escape the bombs, being ushered into this very shelter, shivering on the very benches that I was sitting on, hiding and fearing that these were possibly his last hours on Earth. Huddled with his neighbors, everyone fearing that all the certainties and all the realities of their lives would come tumbling down during those fateful hours. Now, even though I still can't fully comprehend the level of pain, suffering, fear, and uncertainty that Barcelona citizens went through back then, I had now gained a lot more insight into what those regular people living just like you and me had endured. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the exact reason why I say we must maintain and preserve the bunkers that are currently open. But more importantly, we must let the public know of their existence. Most people in Barcelona have never heard that these shelters even existed in the first place, much less considered visiting one. These bunkers deserve greater recognition and, promo and promotion in order to bring awareness to a time in this city's history that's rapidly fading away from people's memories, consciousness, and general knowledge. It's critical that we remember the horrors of the bombings, the targeting of civilians, the destruction of families, and the community cohesion that, that withstood this onslaught from the skies. By doing this, we will be in contact with this time period, thus preventing its erasure, as it will be fresher in our minds. Mark Twain once said, History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And if we as a society don't actively try and preserve these concrete examples of our past, such as these shelters, and take the time to visit and experience them, we will be condemned to repeat history's rhythmic atrocities. This ignorance sets a perilous precedent. An oblivious society unavoidably committing these acts once again. As they, never know what, as they never knew what the victims lived through, how could they not reenact history? That's why I want to encourage all of you to take some hours one day and visit these historical sites while you still can. In our march towards modernity and the constant renovation and reconstruction of a city just like Barcelona, it's crucial that we preserve these concrete memories of our past. Memories that gave this city its character. These few remaining physical remnants of the Civil War act as a tangible and a real reminder of the dangers of letting divisions in society getting too wide and the inhumanity that inevitably results from the horrors of war. But perhaps more importantly and more specifically, these bunkers remind us of what inevitably happens when we forget. Thank you very much.